They may look rough and ready, but for some, even a fender bender can be a budget breaker. Here's Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson with a Dateline Consumer Alert. Bumper cars, they're good old-fashioned summer fun. But outside the amusement park, bumper bashing costs serious money. You'd assume SUVs like these, supposedly designed to take on rugged terrain, could easily survive a five-mile-an-hour fender bender. They don't cause injuries, but we have a lot of property damage. Brian O'Neill cares about reducing property damage. He heads the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, which is funded by insurance companies. Institute testing picks up where the government leaves off. The federal government has a bumper standard for cars, but not for SUVs, the hottest selling vehicles on the road, because they're classified as trucks. We run four or five mile an hour tests. Front into a flat barrier, rear into flat barrier, front corner into the barrier, and the rear into pole. After the impact, engineers and appraisers carefully analyze the damage and estimate repair costs. Then each is given a rating of good, acceptable, marginal, or poor. This round involves four smaller size SUVs that sell in the twenty to $25,000 range bought right off dealers' lots. The 2002 Honda CRV, the 2002 Land Rover Freelander, the 2002 Saturn View, and the 2003 Subaru Forester. First up, the Forester, newly redesigned this year. When the Institute last tested it in 1998, the Forester only received a marginal rating. It was quite an improvement this time. In all four tests, there is relatively little damage, an average of $355 per test in repairs. Clearly, manufacturers can design bumpers for this class of vehicles to prevent damage. Subaru's figured out how to do it. The Subaru Forester earns a good rating, the Institute's highest mark. The 2002 Land Rover Freelander has been sold in Europe for years, but it's new to the United States. The flat front test, $932 worth of damage. The rear pole test, over $2,000 in repair costs. The rear flat, $2,700. All this in just a five-mile-an-hour fender bender. Not really any faster than a brisk walk. This whole rear section needs to be replaced. There's no question that the location of this wheel is the cause of this excessive damage. The Land Rover Freelander gets the Institute's lowest rating, poor. This is the 2002 Honda CRV. In 1998, its bumpers were hit with a poor rating. With plenty of room for improvement, how will the Honda do this year? Like the Freelander, the CRV has a mounted rear wheel. This is a very bad concept. This design guarantees that the owners of these vehicles are going to experience expensive and unnecessary repair costs. With over $2,500 in each of the rear bumper tests, the Honda CRV gets another pour. Finally, the Saturn View, Saturn's first ever SUV. The front angle test causes damage to the bumper cover, a turn signal, the fog light, and the vehicle's underside. It sustained over $1,100 worth of damage in the front angle barrier test. In the rear test, things look pretty good until Institute engineers get a view that surprises them. When we looked at the bumper system, we concluded that the manufacturer had in effect cheated. That's because, O'Neill says, Saturn put a stiff foam insert right at the center of the bumper, right where manufacturers know the Insurance Institute performs the rear pole test. That foam is there to do well in this test, not to do well in real world crashes. It's only going to help in the dead center hit. So it's back to the crash hall for the Saturn view. This time, the vehicle is crashed off center into the pole and pays the price. The repair cost went up to $1,300, more than twice the cost of the first test. The Saturn view gets a pour. 
So of the four small SUVs in this group, only one, the Subaru Forester, earns the Institute's highest rating. Although not every test had excessive damage costs, the Honda CRV, the Land Rover Freelander, and the Saturn View all received the lowest grade, poor. Last year, other small SUVs put to the test didn't fare much better. The Toyota RAV4 and Hyundai Santa Fe both rated poor, while the Ford Escape also sold as the Mazda Tribute got an acceptable rating. What do car makers have to say about these latest bumper tests? Saturn, Land Rover, and Honda say safety, not repair cost, is their first priority. Saturn says it does not design vehicles to pass specific tests, and Land Rover says heavier, more durable bumpers could mean less efficient gas mileage. Brian O'Neill says there's just no excuse for such poor bumper performance. Manufacturers can design good bumpers. Unfortunately, all too often they choose not to. You can find out how these same SUVs fared in high-speed crash tests next Tuesday on Dateline. For more information on the Insurance Institute's bumper test, visit our website.